Good day everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. This video is for Module 10, Automating Task with Macros. Module 10, Automating Task with Macros. This can be found on page AC597 of your textbook. Can you believe it? We've made it to page AC597. We will be using the ordering.accdb database that we used in Module 9. So please go ahead and get that database ready. Again, this is Module 10, Automating Tasks with Macros. We're using the ordering.accdb database. Doxha wants you to create a user interface for the ordering database. A new user interface for the ordering database. To help with this request, complete the following steps. Open the ordering database. So I'll go ahead and open up mine off the desktop. Delete the action queries, QRY append sterile, QRY delete price less 20, QRY make special environment, and QRY special discount. I've already done that in my database. But let me help you walk you through that. First, you're going to find the QRY append sterile query. Click on it to select it. Then right click on it, choose delete, and then answer yes to the question that comes up. That will get rid of that query. You'll then repeat the process for the QRY delete price less 20 query. Right click on it, choose delete, then answer yes. Now we're going to move on to the QRY Make Special Environ query. Right click, delete, answer yes, and then finally do the same steps for the QRY Special Discount. Right click, choose delete, and then answer yes. That will complete step number one. Step number two, design and create a form named FRM queries that has the following components and characteristics. So before I go any further, I'm going to go to create blank form. I'm going to close my field list and then hit save, the save disk get, and I'm going to call it FRM queries and click OK. All right. Step 2A, set the forms caption property to ordering queries. So I'm going to go to it in design view. Okay. I'm going to go up to this little dot that's right above my uh, vertical ruler and to the left of my horizontal ruler. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose form properties. And I'm going to go over to the all tab and then click on caption and type in ordering queries. Ordering queries. Okay? Now, step 2B is fairly lengthy and it sounds very troublesome, but they make it easy on us in a, in a uh, certain way. So let me go ahead and read it real quick to you. It says, open the ordering database. I'm sorry, I'm reading step 1. Step 2B, add a list box control with a name property value of LST, yes that is an L, LST query list that displays all the query names contained in the ordering database, excluding those that start with a tilde character. To place the query names in the list box control, use a SQL SQL select statement to retrieve the query names from the MS objects table and display the queries in alphabetical order. But luckily we have this hint. Use the same SQL select query that you used in the module. Widen the list box control to approximately two and a half inches. All right, so luckily we have the control that we need to type in on page AC582 in your textbook. So if you turn to that page, down at the bottom, step number three, which is highlighted in yellow, 
is exactly what we're going to type and we don't have to worry about knowing programming language. Uh, all we have to do is type the uh, statement that we see in step number three. So here we go. We're going to add a list box. So you're going to go to your design ribbon. And first of all, we want to make sure we turn off the wizard. We don't want the wizard to be running for this. So I'm going to click the more button here. And I'm going to make sure that this is turned off. Now, mine is currently turned off, and I know that because there's no gray box around the control of uh, the little wand over here next to control wizards. But I'm going to turn it on so that you can see what it would look like. There it is. It's got a, square, a gray box over that control. I'm going to click on it to turn it off again. We do not want the wizard to run for this. Now, I'm going to go back to the More button, and I'm looking for the one that says List. A tooltip comes up for each and every one when you put your pointer on it. Mine happens to be found right here underneath the capital A, little a, known as your label control. Yours might not be there, so don't panic, but look for the one that says list box. I'm going to click on it. I'm then going to click at about the one inch horizontal and the one inch vertical ruler, about right there. I'm going to click, and we have added a list box. Now, I want to come over to the property sheet and I want to make sure that it says list open close parenthesis in there so that the property sheet is for the list box. And I'm going to go to uh, the data tab. And I'm going to look for the row source, which is my second row down. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to zoom. Because in this zoom box, I'm going to type exactly what I see on page AC582. I'm going to type it exactly. So take it slow and accurate. Don't try to rush through this. You will make a stupid mistake. Be slow and accurate. So I type the word select space open bracket. Not a parenthesis, but a bracket. I type in the word name. Then I close my square bracket. Space. The word from in capital letters, space, capital M, capital S, YS, lowercase, and then capital O, and the rest of the word objects. Okay, space, capital word of where, W-H-E-R-E, -E. space, open bracket, the word type, T-Y-P-E, close your square bracket, equals 5, space, capital A, and D, space, the word left, open parenthesis, open square bracket, type the word name, close your square bracket, comma, 1, Close your parenthesis. Less than, greater than signs back to back. Quote, tilde, not a dash, but a tilde, which is to the left of the one above my numbers. It's right above my tab key. Tilde, and then another quote. Space, order in capital letters. Space, by by in capital letters space open square bracket name close square bracket semicolon so there it is hopefully you have your book open you don't have to look at the screen or the video but there you go that's what you need to type in there go ahead and click OK very good OK now, see what else I should be doing here. We'll stop there. Actually, what I would like to also do is I want to uh, go to the uh, property sheet, the all tab again for the list box. And for this one, I want to go to the name box. So I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top. And in the name box, I'm going to type LST. Query list and then tab. Okay.
Very good. Very good. All right. Let's continue on reading. C. 2C. In the attached label control. So that would be this one right here. So I'm going to click on that label control. Change the caption to queries available. So I'm going to go over here. If necessary, make sure you're on the All tab. Click on Caption, and we're going to call this Queries Available. All right. Formatted with a 12 point. So I'm going to go to the Format tab, change the font to 12, and Bold. Okay. Position the label above the list box control and increase the width of the label control to fit the text. So I'm going to use the big square box in the upper left corner to move it. That way it will only move the label control and not the text box control. If you click anywhere else to move it, it will move both of them together. So I'm going to use the big square box in the upper left corner. I click and drag that above my list box. Then I'm going to go to the right sizing handle, and I put my pointer right on it. I get a left arrow and a right arrow. I double click, and that will resize that box. And as I did that, I remembered that I missed a step in the previous one where it wanted me to increase the width of my um, list box to, um, I believe it said, two and a half inches. And mine is only one inch right now, so I'm going to click and drag that out to about three and a half inches on my upper ruler to widen that. All right, good job. Step 2D, add two command buttons below the list box control. The left command button should display the preview icon above the word preview. And the right command button should display the MS Access Query icon above the word display. Okay, so I go back to my design ribbon. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to... Okay, so I want to click on the button here. I want to use the XXX button. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click below my list box. Okay. Now it says, let me read this. Add two command buttons. The right command button should display preview. Okay. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on caption and I'm going to type in preview. Okay. Preview. Then I'm going to go down to where it says picture, and it currently says none. I'm going to use the three buttons called the build. Click that. And I'm going to scroll down until I find the picture called preview. They're in alphabetical order. Then click OK. Then I'm going to resize this box so that I can see both the text as well as the picture. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I've also need to go up here. I was panicking there for a minute. I know to me to also go up here where it says picture caption arrangement, and I need to pick bottom. There, I feel better. Okay, a little bit nervous there. Okay, now I'm going to add a second button, XXX. I'm going to click over here. This one, I'm going to change the caption to display. I go to picture, click the build button again. This one they want me to pick MS query, access query. So I pick that, click OK. Again, I have to go up to the picture capture arrangement and choose bottom. And then I'm going to resize this one as well. And there we go. We've got our two buttons. Great job. Step 2E, create a macro for the form that moves the focus to the first query name in the list box control when the form loads. Okay? All right. So 
here's what we're going to do to complete that. All right, so we're going to make sure that we have this say form. We want it, the properties to be for the form. I'm going to go to the event tab. Go to the event tab. And we're looking for on load, which is the second row down. I'm going to click the three build buttons right there. And we're always going to do macro builder. So I'm going to click there and click OK. In the very first um, action thing that has a green plus sign, we're going to drop that arrow down and we're going to pick go to control. Go to control. In the control name, we're going to type L S T and it will find the first query list and we're going to double click on that to select it. Okay. Now I'm going to click the down arrow for the add new action and I'm going to scroll down and see if I can find something called send heat, which I'm not seeing it. But before you panic, Click on the button that says Show All Actions. So I click on that. I drop this down. And if I scroll down now, I will find the option of Send Keys right there. I'm going to click on that. Okay. And then where it says Keystrokes, I'm going to do parenthesis down. Close my parenthesis. I'll save this and then use the close on my ribbon to close it. Okay. Now we've got to add, oh, let me read the step though. That's it, step number E. F. Create a macro that causes the query data sheet to display the selected query. Then configure the form so the macro runs when a user double clicks a query name or when a user selects a query name in the list box and clicks the right command button. G, create a macro for the left command button that opens the selected query in print preview. So we're going to kind of do both at the same time. All right, so first I'm going to click on the preview. one. I'll do the preview one first. I'm doing things a little bit out of order. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here on the pre property sheet for the preview. So make sure you click on that button and we're going to be on on click when someone clicks that. Okay. We're going to click the three buttons for the build. We're going to go to Macro Builder. My first action is going to be Open Query. Open Query. Okay. The query name, we're going to type equals. Then we're going to come all the way over here and click the little wand here, the Builder. And what we're going to do is we're looking for first query list and I'm going to double click on that and then click OK. Perfect. Perfect. The view, we're going to make that print preview. Print preview. That's what this button is to do. Print preview. OK. Save and close. Perfect. You're doing a great job. OK. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for display. I'm going to click on display, on click, hit the three buttons, macro builder. We're going to select again, open query. Again, we're going to do equals, click on the little wand, find first query list, click OK. And this one we are going to leave as data sheet. Okay. Save and close. Now this leaves just the other thing that they wanted me to do, and that is to um, have it so that um, uh, when they, let me read it here, actually it'd be better to read it. Create a macro that controls the query data sheet to display the selected query, then configure the form so the macro runs when a user double clicks a query name or when a user selects a query name. Okay. So we're going to make sure that the list box is selected. Okay. Then we're going to go to event and we're going to say on double click. On double click. 
We're going to go to the Build button. Make sure it says Macro Builder, and we're going to click OK. OK. You guessed it. We're going to drop this down and say Open Query. All right. In there, we're going to do an Equals. We're going to click the little wand over here. Double click on First Query List. Click OK. Make sure it says data sheet, which it does. Save and close. Okay. Now we're going to test and see how everything works. So we're going to go to form view. I'm going to pick a particular query. Click on preview. It previews it for me. I can close that. Click on display. And it displays it to me in data sheet view. Perfect. If they double click on it, it opens it up. Everything is working beautifully. Fantastic. Great job. Save, and we can close this particular query. Perfect. All right. Step number three create a navigation form named Form Navigation using the horizontal tabs to levels layout. That includes the following tab names and objects. Okay, so we're going to go to Create, Navigation, and they want me to use the horizontal tab to levels. So I click. Now I'm going to save this right off the bat, and I want to call this FRM Navigation. FRM Navigation, click OK. All right, now I click on the very first thing that says Add New right here. I click twice on it, and I'm going to type in Forms and hit Enter. I'm going to repeat the process here, click on it twice, and this time I'm going to type in Queries, Enter. And then finally, I'm going to click twice, and I'm going to type in um, Reports. Okay. Now, I'm going to click on Forms, and if I read the instructions, 3A, use Forms as the name for the leftmost tab level tab, and place the following forms below it as lower level tabs in order. So first they want Form Supplier. So I take Form Supplier, I click and hold down the left side of my mouse, and I drag it right on top of Add New Under Forms here. Perfect. Then the next one they want is the form suppliers with products. I click and drag it on top of form new that's right to the right of form supplier, and that adds that one. So now I have two tabs that they can look at either one of the forms that they might want to look at. Now I click on queries. Use queries as the name for the second tab and place the form queries form below it on a lower level tab. So this time I go to form queries. I click and drag it on top of Add New under Queries. Perfect. Perfect. 3C. I click on Reports. And they want, in order, the Report Supplier Details. So I click and drag it on top of Add New under Reports. Let me make sure I'm under, before I do that, let me make sure I got Reports selected. Okay, there we go. Report Supplier, Add New, and then Product by Supplier, click on Add New. Perfect. Okay. 3D, delete the navigation form's picture and title, and set the form's caption to Ordering Database. All right, so we delete this by clicking on it and hitting our Delete key, clicking here, hitting Delete, I'm going to go to my property sheet, and I'm going to go to the All tab, and scroll all the way up to the top. Go all the way up to the top for Caption, and they want me to type in their Ordering Database. Perfect. All right. 
Test the navigation form, remembering a first, a, to first select a query in the list or the queries tab before testing the command buttons. Okay, so we're good. I'm going to save this and close it. And we're going to make a backup copy. So I'm going to do File, Save As, Backup Database, Save As. I'll save it to my desktop. Click Save. And then I'm going to do a File, Compact and Repair Database. And I'll close my database. And that wraps up the video for today for Module 10. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.